You are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Tex, um, it's good to be here with you today. And um, before I bring Tex on in a minute or so, I just want to let everyone know um, I started. I became familiar with Tex Mars in the summer of 1993 when I visited a local bookstore and picked up a copy of a book called Dark Majesty. Um, read it, subscribed to his newsletter, and over the years read many other books, Circle of Intrigue, um, Days of Hunger, Days of Chaos, Project Lucid, Codex Magica, so many more. There's too many to even list. Um, I've also had the, the great fortune to meet Tex twice in Washington, D.C., and I've interviewed him before. I've appeared on his show. And last year I even did a, a review for American Free Press of his latest DVD, I think one of his latest DVDs, called Die, America, Die, and that appeared in American Free Press. Also, um, a chapbook I published, I believe it was last year, called Conspiracy Hall of Fame, um, included 20 members, and one of them, of course, was Tex Mars, who I characterize as being probably the most prolific individual ever in the conspiracy field with all his books and DVDs, newsletters, CDs, um, an amazing amount of input. And to me, I have a great deal of respect for output. So um, Tex is right up there at the top. And finally, he's the, the, the founder of Power of Prophecy. And what I like most about Tex that I've, I've seen over the years is that he's not afraid to take risks. Um, Tex could very easily right now play it safe. But he doesn't. He keeps pushing the envelope. And that's that's the best about him. And his new book proves this. It's called Robot Alchemy. And all I can say is that being in this field for over 20 years, I'm not easily impressed anymore. I've, I've read and seen it all. Well, what I can say about Robot Alchemy is I'm impressed. I'm very, very impressed with this book. And I actually couldn't wait. Even before it was published, I was telling Tex and Michelle and everyone at his um, at Power of Prophecy how much I couldn't wait to get this book and once it finally arrived in the mail it, it lived up to and beyond ex- its expectations so without any further ado I'd like to welcome Tex Mars to AFP Radio Network how are you doing Tex Hey Victor I'm, I'm doing great and I, I loved all that you told I know I don't deserve any of that but it's <laughs> it's nice that you you say a lot of nice things about me but uh, I, I have my uh, Detractors too, you know the the Big Brother government folks that are always down on me. So it, it's nice to know I'm, I'm among a, a great friend. Uh, yeah. And uh, I uh, I love American Free Press. Of course, I have a, a subscription of my own. Always grab it the first time it gets in. I see a lot of articles by you and others, and I really appreciate what Willis Corto's done there. So it's just a it's a great relationship. Yeah, and before we um, jump into your book, which I can't wait to get to, um, why don't you mention first how people can find Robot Alchemy, and secondly, this upcoming fall, you have uh, a conference down there in Austin. Uh, why don't you mention that, and I think also one in within the next couple of weeks or so. So why don't you tell everyone how to find Robot Alchemy and then these two upcoming conferences? Well, great. Well, Robot Alchemy, of course, is uh, available right now. Uh, through uh, powerofprophecy.com. Uh, they can go and order it from us, use their PayPal or their charge card. Uh, it's uh, $30. Uh, it's $35 if you order it at a bookstore, although Amazon.com probably has it a little bit cheaper than that. But you can get it from Amazon.com. Uh, I think a Barnes & Noble has the Nook, you know, the electronic version right now. But uh, if people want it, powerofprophecy.com, right there on our home page, uh, and they can uh, they can get the book. It really just came out, uh, and so I'm I'm very uh, I'm very proud of it because uh, you know it was about 28 years ago that I wrote uh, my first robot book. It was called the Personal Robot Book, Victor, uh, and it was uh, well it was the main selection of the Computer Book Club, the Electronics Book Club. It was the first book ever published about personal robots. Uh, told all about them, had many of the different models. That was 28 years ago. Then I did a book, uh, the very first book ever in the world, on careers with robots. Uh, So I did that book. So those are probably still hanging around some dusty old shelf on a library, Uh you know. But but, uh, I sort of always have kept my, you might say my left hand, or my right hand, anyway, one hand in the robot picture, 
uh, as I as I very you know sort of warily looked at what was going on in robotics, uh, but I was uh, on to other things and and uh, you know I've written over forty books, but I, I just had to come back when I really you know j- just lately the last six months I began to get very alarmed because I discovered the magnitude of uh, Big Brother government you know DARPA the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has spent billions and billions of dollars. They see robotics and robots as the number one growth area in the world uh, in military spending. Uh, and there are, of course, uh, drones, and there's all kinds of drones. There's drones as small as uh, mosquitoes, uh, flies, uh, bumblebees, uh, birds, uh, and uh, they may be following you today. Uh, I had a, a lady who, who told me that she was sure that she's being uh, tracked by a bumblebee. Well, you know, and she said it's it's not a, a real bumblebee, but it looks like one. And anyway, she told me about it. This person is very reliable. Uh, and you say, oh, that's that's so stupid. That's just crazy. Well, it's not at all when you when you read about these things and they're 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 building swarms of, of different kinds of uh, uh, drones. But there are there are robotic insects, and uh, one could be in your. I'm not trying to to cause fear or anything, but one could be watching you and I right now. They could be in our, you know, up in the ceiling somewhere just watching us. Mm-hmm. And they have, uh, they have microphones uh, on them. Uh, they're, they're being designed now to actually inject, uh, you know, nano uh, uh, particles into people. So these things are just plain real. Uh, there, there are many of them that you can go and Google up, but you can get my book too and you'll see pictures uh, of of many of these things, I mean, no no bigger than your, you know, the tip of your thumb, uh, but it, it's just amazing um, miniaturization what it's able to do. But at the same time, the the government has uh, Alpha Dog. Uh, they have a uh, it's a, it's a huge monster. It looks like a dog. It can it can hike for twenty miles. Uh, they also have the cheetah. It can run as three times as fast as a human being. It's a huge metallic machine. Uh, that, that's why they call it Cheetah. Uh, and so there's a, even an Eater robot, E A T R. Now I'm, I'm I'm telling people the truth. You see pictures of these things in my book, Robot Alchemy. But the Eater is quite interesting because they they came out and they had a big press conference for it. And they said this Eater does not use gasoline or or uh, oil for fuel it uses biomass uh and when you don't have uh, sticks and limbs and twigs it can eat dead human bodies on the battlefield and i i thought about that you remember the movie soylent green oh i remember it well i, I mean <laughs> and this thing actually uh it can can it it it, it goes a hundred miles a day it can travel uh by eating human dead human bodies, so they 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 look forward in in ten to twenty years from now. I'm not having hardly any uh, military people uh, as such, but having all robots on the battlefield. So this this is going to change everything, and uh, America is is doing what it can to to end up uh, with this. But it's going to be a frightening thing. You know, we think of the KGB or the the Nazis knocking on our door. Uh, asking for, uh, you know, our, our papers or whatever. But whoever thought it might, would, would be uh, robotic, uh, humanoids. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, uh, well, that's it's one a of the, strong possibility. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things I, I like best about your book is it's not only great content but beautiful color pictures throughout. I mean, color pictures, this is the kind of book I wish I could publish <laughs> you know, from a <laughs> publishing standpoint. But Anyway, Tex, my first question is, uh, I've studied secret societies for, for many years, and when you read about what they actually want to attain through this concept called alchemy, it really doesn't primarily deal with money or fame or global domination or material possessions. Those are, those are all stepping stones for them. When you really delve into the text of these secret societies, the real goal for thousands of years has always been immortality. They want to live forever. That's what they're trying to find out how to do. So when you talk about the title of your book, Robot Alchemy, and how now 
through this advanced technology, the global elite may finally be able to achieve the real goal of, of alchemic immortality. So what do you think about that? Well, that's true. That's the reason I titled the book Robot Alchemy. Alchemy, of course, means uh, witchcraft, uh, magic, uh, secret uh, uh, life. Uh, and, and so alchemy basically, you know, in the old, the old days, they, they claimed the alchemists uh, could make uh, gold from base lead, uh, and and uh, but but really the, the story of alchemy is that you can give life to inanimate objects or, or particles. Uh, so uh, this is what they want. I, I have a chapter on transhumanism. It's uh, they've got their own field now, uh, and they believe that they can become first of all cyborgs. A cyborg is basically a human being who has so many parts, we already know about artificial hearts and so forth, uh, that they, they literally uh, become a, a machine, a cyborg. Now, we're reaching these levels, and I, and I show people, remember uh, Robert Pistorius, the guy that killed a woman recently, uh, the, the Olympics runner. Oh, yeah, he, was in the, runner. He, was, yeah. he was so fast, but he, yet he had both legs cut off. Yep. Uh, and he had uh, prostheses, you know, metal prosth prostheses. Uh, but we have others like that, too. In fact, I have a picture, I can't remember what page, maybe page 85 of my book, that shows a real woman, and she's, you know, you can see uh, the, the robotic parts in her shoulder, her chest, and her, her uh, arm. And then I show, in the early 1950s, a science fiction magazine that shows a doctor working on a woman that looks exactly like her. I mean... You know, so so we have reached that stage that used to be science fiction, mm -hmm. and uh, so it it is it is very possible. The transhumanism, the the elite are desperate. They're atheists. They 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 they're either occultists who worship some false god, some devil, or they're simply atheists, uh, and they, they don't have any hope of of re receiving eternal life. Um, they they don't believe in Jesus Christ, of course. So. To them, it's very important to find some way to achieve eternal life. They believe they've got it now with androids and robots. Uh, in fact, uh, they, they, they cherish the, the thought of someday, and, and, and I'm not talking about you know 100 years from now. I'm talking about 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is really amazing that in maybe 15, 20, 25 years, they believe they can download, to use a computer term, download their brain into a robot, and then they would live, quote unquote, forever. Yeah, and then they would just have interchangeable parts, like a like a water pump in your car. Snap one out and Absolutely. put the other one in, and that's it. So, well, let me um, get a, qu a comment. This is from page forty-eight of your book. Real quick quote: It says, "The Luciferian elite believe they are gods. They believe they can live eternally through transhumanism and the downloading of human consciousness into new robotic bodies." They believe they can create a new scientific salvation with nanotech, artificial intelligence, androids, and transhumanism. So that's really what we're talking about now, but this is the dream come true for them, isn't it? It, it is. And not only that, they believe that with robots, they will be able to easily control the world. Right now, there are 7 billion people on this planet. I mean, let's, let's face it, people are just pesky. <laughs> They, mm -hmm. They're unreliable. They're undependable. Uh, they become terrorists. Uh, they fight Big Brother. I mean, look, 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 in the United States, there are many like you and I, Victor, yeah, who, who, who understand what's going on. We're called conspiracy theorists. They call us all kind of names. But we know that the elite would love to destroy us. Well, uh, what? But, but they want to destroy everybody. They, 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 they want to have robot workers... Uh, and, and in every field, uh, and then they can kill all the useless eaters. And this may sound uh, unbelievable, but let, let me give you an example of this. H how many people? I mean, uh, in are in Red China today? There's one billion three hundred million, just in Red China. I mean, that is an inexhaustible uh, resource there for for workers, and and that's why they've been getting so much business. You know. Every almost every electronic object in the world is, is made uh, in Red China. 
there's a there's a corporation there, a company called Foxconn, uh, and Foxconn has gigantic factories, and they make nothing but uh, electronic objects, you know, uh, HD TVs. Uh, iPhones, they make every iPhone that's made in the world in Red China. Now, Americans don't know this. We don't know that everything is made in Red China. Uh, but but the Red Chinese workers, uh, you know, they just go out, they've got all these hundreds of thousands of peasants dying for jobs, and they've been working at these companies. For example, Foxconn, uh, they have a factory that has over 450,000 employees. 450,000. Now, these workers have been complaining recently i mean they're treated like you know they're treated like insects basically they live in drab little bitty one room places uh that they they work seven days a week they're paid almost nothing they're they're basically slave drones and they've been complaining recently victor rightly so they don't have any unions they don't have any help uh, and many of them have been just killing themselves this has even got in the, the international news, and it creates bad press for the company, Foxconn. Now, think about this. Apple, Apple Computer Company, has all these millions of iPhones made by these poor workers in China. And, and the workers are so unhappy that many of them have been going on top of the buildings and jumping off and killing themselves. The company literally had to go out and put big nets all around the perimeter of the building to keep people from jumping off the buildings. Uh, but finally, the president, now this is in my book, Robot Alchemy, finally last year he got sick of it. He said, I'll fix all of y'all. He goes out and buys robots to replace them. He's already begun. He said in the next uh, three to four years he's going to buy four million robots. He's going to replace everybody. Now, what are they What are they going to do? Uh now, Apple, they've already got that. They call them Foxbots for Foxconn, the company, you know. Uh-huh. And they're already, they're, they're, there's already uh, 15 or 20,000 of them on the work floors. And they're steadily now replacing all of these poor Chinese that were like slaves before with machines. And they say, we love the machine. It works three shifts every day. Or two, if you work twelve hours a day, mm-hmm. it, it it doesn't need utilities. It it works in the dark. It doesn't need, you know, um, uh, it 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 never gets cold or hot. So it, you don't you don't need all those utilities and all the energy, and, and so it, and it never complains. It you don't have to pay it. You don't have to buy it medical insurance or take care of it when it gets sick or yeah, whatever. It yeah. always is there. Now now the problem is. How do they get these robots? Well, they get them from right now China. Pretty soon they're they're going to be making their own, but now they get them from Japan. Well, in Japan, robots build other robots. They don't even have workers to build the robots. Now this is they say that now our economy is already beginning to to uh, metamorphosis into this new robot world. Now, if, if you think that, that uh, you know, um, America now has probably 20, 25 percent unemployment, they say 7 percent, but that's because everybody quit looking. Right. Now, what people don't know is many of those people will never get a job, never go back to work. They've been replaced by automation, computers, software, and robots. And, and this is true. This is, from now on, you're going to see it increase. Now, we've been told about this for 20, 30 40 years. Someday, you know, robots are going to replace everybody. But now, finally, it's happening. In fact, I got a call, I got a uh, uh, email from uh, CNBC.com, an article, Robot Revolution, stay calm about it, it says, and make money. Ah, yes, the, the CNBC, of course, is the money channel. Mm-hmm. But they're going to they're gonna teach you, they're going to tell you about the companies. They say, now, finally, we have a robot revolution. It's fully in process. But don't get too frantic about it. You can make money. So, of course, if you're a rich guy now, you're going to you're going to invest in all these robots uh, and make money. But how about how about all the workers out there? Don't have enough money. To right, invest. right. They're not going to make but, any money. But yeah. here's the whole here's the whole point, Victor. The elite right now see us as useless eaters. I mean, right now, 50 million Americans are on welfare. 
I mean, uh, excuse me, food stamps. Fifty million mm-hmm. workers. Uh, all they, they get free telephones. Their 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 uh, rent is subsidized. They get Medicaid. They have all these free free things, right? I mean, th- there's no jobs for them, so they get everything free. Uh, uh, this has been helping helping Obama, of course, the Democrats. But this this is going to go from 50 million to 60 million to 80 million to 120 million, and and so I believe the elite is going to be looking at this right now. It's very favorable for them because these people vote, and they're they're making sure all of these people are voting, uh, who, who don't know anything. They're all many of them are illegal aliens, etc., uh, and they're all they're all going to vote. Uh, so, but once they have a clasp, a, a iron grip on the government, then they're going to turn around and say, you know what? Why do we need a hundred and some odd million people on welfare? Right what, are, right. what what good are they doing for us? We don't need them anymore, and then comes the killing, and I I, I believe that's going to happen. Uh, there's a I, I quote a man named Bill Joy. He he is uh, the the former CEO of Sun Microsystems. That that was the you know the United States the largest computer server company. He said that he he really never thought about it. And then one day he began to think about the robot revolution. And he said, uh-oh, they don't need us. He put himself in that category. A mm-hmm. brilliant guy, a billionaire. You know, But he's not one of the elite, I suppose. But he says, you know what? They don't need us. They don't need us anymore. What are we going to do? Yeah. Well, when I go through your book, um, and it, this segues right into that, that it, it becomes apparent once you read through it that we're going to reach a point where these robotic computer machines ultimately surpass humans. In essence, they're going to they'll become the new masters or maybe even the new gods in their minds. So it was us though, Tex, us humans that created these computers. So yes. the question is, will we ever reach a point of deicide? And deicide means the killing of one's creator or god. So will we ever reach a point of deicide where the machines feel it's necessary to murder their makers, meaning us? Well, th- this sounds so in- so incredible. You know, that it just can't happen. You know, after all, we program the computers. We program the robots. We tell them what to think. But do we? Because now they're very they're very hard at work on intelligent robots that have consciousness, awareness. They think for themselves. Sure. You, you you create a certain brain, and right now, you know, Obama has announced, uh, just as we had the genetics uh, research where we we decided to look at the entire human body and figure out the genetics for every every component part. They've done that, and they finished the genetics project. Uh, so you know, we have amazing things going on in that field. At the same time, he said we have a brain project. Now they're looking and trying to figure out how the brain works. If they can figure out exactly how the brain works, you know, all the cells and the neurons, how they hit and all that, the chemical makeup, then they can they can build this intelligent robot. Now, here's the thing. Uh, uh, back in, oh, ten years ago uh, or so, uh, a man named Vernon Inge was a mathematics professor at San Diego State. He wrote a book called The Coming uh, Age of Singularity. He coined the term singularity. What is singularity? Well, he says in about 25 years now, 15 years from now, just 15 years, 15 years, that's all, the age of singularity will be reached. What is that? That's when humans are surpassed by robots. Mm -hmm. I mean, we only have a certain kind of a brain. I mean, we can get, get a Ph.D., we can study, but we can only go so far. And then the robots, at the age of singularity... The robots will be equal to us. They will be at parity with human beings. From that point on, it's, uh, to use a vernacular, Katie bar the door. Then they will go on and become super intelligent in ways that we cannot even fathom. They, they will be so powerfully intelligent that, you know, Moore's Law will really crank in. Moore's Law is simply a technological law that says that every two years, knowledge doubles now that's incredible 
Mm-hmm. Think about it. Uh, a computer power, uh, that is, doubles every two years. It doubles again. So it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. These will have a million times the brain capacity as today's robots. A million times. Yeah. And, and then Vernon Inn said something interesting. He said, we will reach, and that's 15 years from today, we will reach the age of singularity. And, he said, the human era will be ended. Well, that, that's a good point to segue into the next question. So if these machines ever attain this, this point of, of supreme arrogance where it could be text where they don't even want the other – if we compare it in terms of humans where there would be the elite computers and then they would have just the drone robots or the workers, whatever, but could they reach a point where they don't even want the other computer subjects to know about – their creators, again, meaning, meaning us, that they could create their own type of machine mythology or something to replace any memory or history of humans. Is this, is this conceivable? Well, of course, we have all kind of uh, movies like that that uh-huh. warn us about these, you know, the Terminator and, and so forth. Uh, uh, but it, it actually could happen. And, it, and now here's the whole thing. Of course, the, the person out there laughs because they think, "Oh no, no!" They, they, they think they're thinking of the me- metallic, the old cr- clunky, you know, uh, robots, right? Like we we saw on Forbidden Planet, and you know, the fun things, right? And you know, you show show a kid a robot, and he, you know, a big smile goes across his face. But we're, we're talking about a different animal here entirely. Uh, I, I think they will become uh, intelligent in ways that we cannot figure out. In other words, as, as, they be, as they get intelligent, then they're able to solve problems and think of solutions and think of things that you and I are unable to. It, it's not that you're not brilliant. I mean, you're one of the most brilliant guys I know of, Victor, but, you know, we don't have the brain capacity to do it. They, they will have that. At that point, what will they do? Now, uh, I believe the elite are going to first use these robots to, to replace human beings. We're going to be out of a job. They're going to give everybody everything, you know, free. Uh, and, and so first all the, uh, the, the, I call them the slave class, are going to get the, the, take the blacks, the Hispanics, uh, and, you know, and so forth, uh, redneck uh, uh, Anglos, uh, and use them, you know, to win elections and all of that. But eventually they'll say, why do we need these people? We've got ironclad control of the government now, and these are a drag on us. These are, you know, like uh, uh, Ayn Rand uh, said, you know, we don't, we don't need all these people. We can, we can have our own. They're parasites. Mm-hmm. At that point now, then things get very, very, very bad. Uh, and I, I think um, the, the, they will have used the robots to control, to kill all of us. And to control the entire world. I mean, right now we have drones in Pakistan and Yemen. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And and these are you know uh, they're going to be given autonomous control. They go out and kill on their own. There's going to be there's going to be millions of robotic drones in in the skies. It'll be yeah, frightening. I think, uh, yeah, I think um, I'm soon to be in America also. Well, the subtitle of your book is Androids, Cyborgs, and the Magic of Artificial Life. Now, everybody knows about stage magic, where, where somebody pulls a rabbit out of the hatch. But explain what, and I know that you've studied this over the years, Tex, with Codex Magica and all of your books about the, the mysterious monuments and all the symbols in these books. I, I know you're, you've studied this, so explain what the real magic is and how it relates to, this, to your book, because the people designing these robots, they know what magic is, real magic is, and they're using it as some type of like transformative, transformative entity, aren't they? Well, they they are. I, I think these robots they're going to get ahead. You know, they're going to get ahead of themselves. And 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 I think then the robots will in effect ter- turn against the elite. Once the elite are in charge, totally, and they're using these robots to to make us a slave society or just to kill kill us all off. Uh, and I, I think in, in about within 25 years from now, that's why they're they're spending so much money and time on this. Uh, then I believe the robots, there will be unintended consequences, Victor. 
and it's my opinion and others that these robots then will turn on them uh, and and they they'll be shocked to discover that you know they're going to they're going to disappear because the robots are going to turn on them mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Paul Sappho is at Stanford University a brilliant guy and he was thinking about these things and he he, he said this and I, at first your people are going to you know the listeners going to laugh but I, <laughs> This is a very respected roboticist. He said this. He said, you know, it's going to get to a point where the robots are so intelligent and are so capable that they will, con- they will consider us as their pets, hmm. if not as their food. Oh, man. That, 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 <laughs> yeah, that harkens back to the, the Twilight Zone episode um, that you mentioned in your book, and, um, you know, I've studied the, the subject of, of consciousness for years, and especially how and why it arose. And a vital step in, in the whole evolution of computer advancement entails them becoming conscious, which you've, you've already mentioned. So how do you see this process of consciousness, real consciousness among these machines coming about? I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to come about as the the intelligence uh, develops and and they they try to you know right now i, I mean th- there are robots that can that have facial expressions uh and they look like human beings and if you scold the robot it it will almost cry you know it, it'll it'll sulk and it'll go mm-hmm. back and it'll sit down and its shoulders will sag you know just just like a, a real human being it's it it feels so bad it made you you know upset etc now this is just fakes this is just, it's, this, it's really not feeling that at all, but they programmed it to be that way. Because the robots are not that intelligent now. But later on, they will be. They'll actually have emotion. They will feel these things. At, at that point, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but I think they will take off. And they, they, you see, robots now, they're making robots that, you know, when it needs electric power, it goes and finds the wall outlet for itself uh-huh. and, pl- and it plugs itself in so i mean it can find its 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 energy source just like you know you go to the refrigerator to get some food yeah it, yeah it, it can it can do these things and so what we're going to find is as as these things are, are developing emotions i think they will they will grow in ways that we did not suspect now you know there's a there's a very interesting article uh or a book by uh, by uh, Jack Williamson. I, I talk about it. I have a whole section on science fiction because, as you know, they're doing a lot of things in movies and such that are really well. We'll be seeing them in ten or fifteen years uh, from now. But in this book, Jack Williamson, it's called "With Folded Hands," and in it, it's a it, it depicts the future, and all these robots are able to do everything for you. I mean, they drive your car, they cook your food, they're, they're they clean your house. I mean, people don't have to do anything. Well, you know, everything goes great because they're prime directive. They've been programmed to to make man happy. That's their program, to make man happy. Well, this guy, you know, he says, you know what? I'm not happy. He tells the robots, I'm a man. Men like to do things. We, we I want to go out. You know, I want to participate in sports. I want to do things. I want to drive my own car. You know, I'm just not happy. And then the robots tell him, you're not happy, sir? No, I'm not happy, he says. Then we will have to fix you, sir, to make you happy. <laughs> so, you know, we're so we're so sorry you're not happy, but we know how to make men happy. So, you know, right, so right before they <laughs> give him a lobotomy, <laughs> he suddenly, he suddenly has a, uh, you know, he says, wait, 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 I am happy. Yes, yes, I, I, I've just discovered. I was just kidding you. I am. Yeah. I'm very, very happy. It sounds like it, a combination of of Hal from um, a Space Odyssey, Kubrick's movie, and um, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, where they lobotomized Jack Nicholson at the end. But um, one of the things I like best about your book were the pictures, and you have these different photographs of female robots. One of them I've seen before. Her name's Geminoid F. That looks yes. remarkably human. And so much so that if someone passed her in a shopping mall, they might not even realize, Tex, that 
it's not human. And Japan is making great strides in this area. So do you think that there's more that we're not aware of, like experiments in, in underground government facilities or bunkers where we can't even imagine what they're doing right now? Well, let, let me tell you what happened to me. Uh, it's been 25 years ago. You know, I was, I was uh, uh, writing these books. I was very interested in robotics, and, and I was uh, uh, writing. Uh, you know, I wrote a, a book called Careers in Robots, High-Tech Job Finder, but I, but I especially wrote these books in robotics. And I, and I, and I went around, and I, I met a number of other roboticists. And one was a very well-known author uh, of robots, how to build your own robot type of thing. And... Uh, one day I was talking with him on the phone, and I said, "What are you working on now?" I, I can't give you his name, and you'll 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 understand why. I said, "What are you working on now?" He says, "Well, Tex, I'm I'm not writing books anymore. I'm working for uh, an agency." I said, uh -huh. "An agency?" He says, "Yeah, I I can't tell you who." And I says, "Oh, where are they at in in uh, Virginia?" Uh, yeah, <laughs> he said, and I said, "Hmm." I said, "Well, what do they? What do they? What do they want?" Uh, remember now, this is twenty-five years ago. He said, "Well, I can't tell you. He said, I, they've assigned me to a team." He said, uh, "As a robotic specialist, he says, but uh, let me just tell you this much." He said, "What if I could make a robot so small, so tiny that you could not see it with your naked eye? What if?" That could be injected into you, or, or, or you, you could get a neural implant and that robot be implanted in your brain. And what if it could go through your blood system, and we're tracking it all the time, and we tell the robot what to do inside of you? And I said, are, are you working on, you know, is that what you're working on? He says, well, I, and he said, I can't say. I said, is, I said you mean like the, the, the old movie, The Fantastic Voyage? I think that was out about then, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, "Yeah, exactly." He says, "Well, that's what I'm working on, but it's 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 very, very a uh, hush cover up, and I can't say anything more about it. I didn't even tell you this." He said, well, yeah. "This is twenty. This is twenty twenty five years ago." Yeah. And imagine, yeah. and then then suddenly, you know, fifteen years ago, I started reading about nano robots, and and robots that uh, that can be implanted in human beings. Uh, so. They they now you know remember Mr. Data uh, Data on uh, in one of the Star Trek uh, uh, you know mm -hmm. shows where Data desired uh, to be hooked up with the Borg. Now what is the Borg? It's thousands of human beings or other creatures, and all of their brains are linked together as one. So you all think alike. Who wh whoever's the master brain of the Borg makes everyone think alike sort of like a gigantic internet but it's it does its own thing well yeah. now the the US army is developing that in fact they took a rat in Brazil in a laboratory and they hooked its brain up through the internet to a rat in a United States laboratory and then they gave the rat orders but it, they were really giving both rats orders at the same time so that, this is an amazing thing that this this is a frightening thing yeah, well, and when you bring in, you know, quantum theory and all of those concepts that you can, you know, go, you can transcend space and time with this stuff. So, and, you know, when I was reading your book, I was struck by the similarities between what you're writing about in the novel Frankenstein, which everybody knows by, by Mary Shelley. <laughs> and, of course, Tex, that um, story didn't turn out very well at the end, as we all know. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, your book is really a similar cautionary tale. Um, what are you cautioning us about? Well, I'm really, I'm really warning people. Please know know what's going on. I mean, our government has different intent than we do. You know, it may not be to our advantage to have these robots. Maybe this is not an area we want to spend billions and billions of dollars for. I mean, uh, there are needs that human beings have right now. Uh, I don't want to pay all these taxes, uh, for example. I don't want military forces in 130 nations by the United States. Uh, you know, I, I would I, I would just like for the government to leave me alone, to be honest with I you. I hear Victor. you. Amen there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but instead.
did. They want to take my money and build these fantastic machines, the Eater robot. They've got a hunter-killer robot that they say can go into a stadium or a, a huge auditorium and by sight recognition and by smell track out a particular human being. And once they've got that person targeted, they can destroy that, that, that person. Out of, a, you know, out, of, out of thousands, a hundred thousand in a gigantic stadium. Well, I don't know if I want my money to go for that. Right. And, and people, yeah. they're, they're, right now, it's, it's just beginning to catch on. But, uh, for example, Human Rights Watch, they've set up, they're spending uh, several million dollars this year uh, to warn people about killer robots. Now, I, I think it's so, this is so new that your, your audience has never heard of these things, most of them. And they're saying, well, what I've never heard of that. I've never heard of Human Rights Watch. Well, that's a big uh, organization around the world. But you mean they're spending millions of dollars for posters and flyers and warning people to stop hunter-killer uh, robots? Yeah, or drones. You know, They say that for every one person that's killed by a drone in an attack, 50 people are killed through collateral damage. What is collateral damage? Oh, well, that was just an accident. They were just in the way. They were there when we killed the one guy. Yeah, wrong place at the wrong time. I, I, exactly. Well, that's, that's not acceptable no, to me. No, is that Is that acceptable? You know, uh, uh, today I was reading that some, some uh, crazy terrorist, you can call him crazy, but uh, Islamic in uh, uh, London killed a guy with a machete. He killed a military guy. And he, he, in broad daylight, with, with all these people watching, he came up and just started slicing the guy and killing him with a machete. And then the Islamic guy said, I did this so that you would see, you British and Americans, what you're doing to our people. You need to come back home and leave us alone, basically, what he said. Until uh -huh. you do, these things will continue to happen. And, of course, they killed him with, you know, bullets, I guess, the cops. But his message... You know, some people, I heard a guy on the radio say, oh, I'm not going to listen to that guy. What does it matter what he said? He's nuts. Well, listen to the message. What did he say? You are killing women and men in my countries, my Islamic countries, and until you stop, we're going to keep killing you people. You know, Allah. We're, we're killing for Allah. Well, mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't think they're killing for Allah, but they are killing, you know, as Ron Paul said, it's blowback. It's blowback. And, and I think it's, it's easier to kill when you don't have to be there doing the killing, when you right, can have right. a robot or a drone do it. This yeah. is the great fear uh, that I have. By the way, this is so big that Ray Kurzweil, who's one of the top world roboticists, he has been made the director of development for Google. Yeah, I, I read that recently, and yeah, he's, he's famous. I get his um, newsletter every morning on my, mm. in my email, and... Um, you know, that, that leads into something you touched upon earlier where you call it in the book replicator robots, where basically these robots now can make copies of themselves. And I guess leading up to now, Tex, people always said, well, if the robots get out of control, we can always just pull the plug on them, you know, this kind <laughs> of naive notion. But yes. if the robots can replicate and make more of themselves, the situation starts to get a, a whole lot stickier, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it really does. Replicator robots that can repair uh, each other and themselves, uh, but they can also make other robots, and then they can make robots more superior than they are. Uh, that, that's that's very frightening. Uh, and you know, a robot doesn't have to look like a person. By the way, uh, I, I I I can safely predict that within uh, twenty years, you'll drive up to a McDonald's. And you'll give the order. It'll be, it'll be it'll be like a huge vending machine. You know, you give the order, and and then you you know for a coke and a hamburger, or whatever, you drive up to a window, and a machine gives you the it makes it for you and gives it to you, and you drive off. Uh, 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 an entire McDonald's may have one employee one, or two yeah. employees that are people. Right. So yeah. so when so so they're gonna they're gonna do away. I think that immigration. You know, right now we are fighting uh, illegal immigrants everywhere. Uh, trying to you know keep a, a nationalistic country, I, I recognize that. But probably in fifteen or twenty years from now, they're not going to have jobs either. 
Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, I, they're, I think they're, 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 trouble finds them now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know yeah, the truth. They, they are. Yeah, because everything we're talking about right now, it all sounds science fictiony, and you know, in in your book, you talk about these things called horror machines, and you bring up a couple famous science fiction writers like PKD, you know, uh, Philip K. Dick and Robert Heinlein, who wrote um, Stranger in a Strange Land. Um, if you could, we're, we're getting close to the end here, but give us one example of how what, what we would perceive as science fiction now, how in the, the near future this science fiction is going to come to life. Well, uh, I, I think in, in the in the area of androids. An android is a robot that looks, you know, like a human being. I don't think we're going to be able to distinguish. So I, I, I think in 15 or 20 years, people, you know, now they're having problems communicating. Look at, look at that Mante Teo. You know, he had a, a fictitious girlfriend for right, four right. years or three years or whatever. Uh-huh. I, I think, you know, won't, won't it be so easy, rather than all the, the problems of um, relationships and all that, I'm not talking about myself or you, but for, for many people, they're going to say, wow, what do I want all that stuff for? When I can go out and buy a robot, she can talk to me, she can, I can, she can be very intelligent, or not talk to me at all if I don't want her to. She Programmer can be beautiful. to say whatever you want her to say, huh? Exactly, and to do whatever you want and to cook your meals, she'll be gorgeous. Now, right now they have those. They're, 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 you know, they, they flutter their eyelids and they, they look it's like the Stepford Wives, almost. Right, right. But it, 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 is, it is coming very soon. You know, right now we, we look at them and they, they move around. They look a little jerky and all that. But they're going to work all those things out. Uh, and so uh, 15 or 20 years from now, you'll say, well, do I want a Marilyn Monroe or do I want, uh, you know, Angel, uh, Angelina Jolie? What model do I want? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and uh, I, I think that's going to happen. So our, our human relationships will really change. Yeah, so that's a bit of think. Yeah, that's a bit of synchronicity, like we were talking about it a couple weeks ago. Because just two days ago, I was talking to someone about the movie The Stepford Wives and how much we we both love that movie. Um, before we close out, text tell everyone again how they can find your book. Sure, uh, Robot Alchemy. Just go to. Uh, I don't know if they're going to carry it there at the uh, bookstore, uh, at uh, uh, you know at American Free Press. They might. I hope they do. But if not, go to powerofprophecy.com, powerofprophecy.com. They can also get the book at amazon.com, uh, Robot Alchemy, Android Cyborgs, and the Magic of Artificial Life. And uh, I guarantee you it will give you something to think about because, you know, I, I tried to, to, to really imagine what could go wrong or what could go right with robots. Uh, and and we, we need to start thinking about these things right now because... They're going to be on us before we know it. Uh, and, and, you know, when the government has such a head start here, uh, I, I'm afraid we'll, we won't be able to turn, turn off the button, so to speak. Yeah, and, yeah, I, I have to concur with what you said because not only, I have to reiterate, is not only is the book beautiful, I mean, it's a gorgeous book, color photos throughout, large size, but as you can tell from the questions I'm asking today, Tex, not only... Does this book make you focus on the subject at hand? But it triggers so many other thoughts then that you're going on this tangent and that tangent. And the book is really a launching pad for not only what you're writing about, but then you think, oh, my God, what if this happens or what if this happens? And it leads you in all of these different directions. And that's what really the the point of what we're trying to do is to make people think about this stuff. So um, two last questions. Um, Robots is... As I discovered from your b- book, um, they're really not a modern-day phenomenon. That, from some of the pictures, um, humans have had a fascination with machines going back at least to the 1600s or so. And then you also have photos of the Wizard of Oz and novels from the early 1900s, where before there was any such thing as robots, we were already fixated on them. So. We find a real fascination with this subject, don't we? We do. Men have a morbid curiosity, uh, a desire to create life. Uh, I, I, I believe right now robots are alive. I think computers are alive. If, you know, it all depends on how you define life. But I believe that robots are alive, and they're, they're getting to be more intelligent. So we have created life in a way. 
uh, but it's, uh, it's a different kind of life. I hope it does not transplant man, uh, but but they but it could. It could take off, and once it takes off, it could happen very very fast, and we would be surprised. By the way, there's a there's a website, a very brilliant guy. He, he makes robots on his own for a hobby, uh, and he's created a website. And he offers everybody in the world a robot by 3D. So you, <laughs> he's offering robots. He says, why, do, why doesn't everybody go out and build their own robot, uh, make their own robot that will move uh, about and even speak? But he says you can do it, and he's, he's offering you the plan, uh, and you can get, get it on 3D. So Almost like know, them 3D guns they're making now, huh? Exactly, 3D guns and now 3D wow. robots. So wow. there will be, if, that, if that happens... There are going to be millions of robots. They'll be everywhere yeah. before we even know it. Yeah. Well, I want to end on a, a positive note. And I have a buddy down in Jersey. His name's Vinny San Martino, who regularly sends me all these techno updates, and and he's fascinated by the subject. And he sends me he sends me links to YouTube or whatever, and shows things that you can't even conceive of tech. Well, you can because you wrote the book. But you know, we've talked about dark fast factories and. Um, fast food chains where there might be only be one human working there, the Chinese, <laughs> right. um, replacing, you know, potentially millions of workers with robots. And there's a thought that if humans become obsolete, then what? But on a positive note, what can we do to, to safeguard that we don't become this dreaded, or we, we realize this dreaded notion that humans become obsolete to the computers? Well, uh, first of all, you know, I, I think God is pretty big person. If you know what I mean, <laughs> uh, God, God uh, is, is not only God of this planet, but of universes. There, you know, there's a multiverse out there. Not not a universe, but a multiverse. There are thousands of galaxies. So it doesn't mean the end of God or that God is not in control. We need to keep that in mind. So God is in control. But but he he may be using these things because I find in Bible prophecy mention not of the word robots because as you just you just said robots have been around a long time but we just gave it that title robots uh, in the in the early 1900s actually and I talk about how the, the term robot got started uh, in my book so so uh, they they are in Bible prophecy read Revelation nine and Revelation thirteen and you'll see there's nothing it's absolute robots there. So uh, I think God is in control. We all need to keep uh, keep that in mind. But I think the elite will use these for wickedness. That's what we want to uh, uh, get in on. We want to try to stop that. Uh, I don't mind robots at all. I'm I'm for technology, uh, but but these people, you know, they're psychopaths, and they're going to figure out a way to use robots to replace human beings. Are a cost of production for them. That's all. If they can get rid of human beings, think of it in, in China. If they're going to use robots in China, what for? Well, because all these people make complaints. They don't even want the poor people, the poor slaves, to make complaints. And this is going to happen in America, too. I, I'm just convinced of it. So uh, we need to really watch out. We need, to, we need to think about what we're doing. Think about what we're doing. And so uh, this is the whole key. Think about what we're doing, where we want to go. And remember that God is in control. Yeah, and I think we agree that you know neither one of us are Luddites, and and I like technology if it can make life more comfortable for all of us. We like that, but there's also you know the the double-edged sword, both sides of the coin, and we can see the the nefarious side of this also. And you know, as as you said, um, robots don't need Obamacare. <laughs> you know, robots <laughs> don't need right. any of. Of those yeah, that things. things will change fast, won't they? Well, first, though, <laughs> yeah. we're going to have Obamacare because people don't have any money to pay. Mm -hmm. And I, but keep this in mind: right now, Congress, the the House of Representatives, can instantly get rid of Obamacare just by not approving any more money for it. Right. But the, 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 this is what people don't understand: it's they, there's not just one vote for Obamacare. There have been 21 separate votes this year for Obamacare. And every single time, our House of Representatives, that's run by the Republicans, voted for it. So they're, they're, they'll, 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 they'll go the one time and say, well, we voted against Obamacare. Yeah, well, for 21 straight times, you voted for it. This See, is, that's a this, troubling thought. The Democrats and Republicans 
won't. They both won't Obamacare. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care how many times they lie to you. All they have to do is tell Obama, you know what, we're not going to fund it anymore. We're not going to fund it this year. It doesn't begin until 2014. We're not going to fund it. So this is the whole thing. Immigration, they all want it, but they're afraid of the people. They're afraid of us raising up. We still have a little bit of power. Even in the age of robots, uh, the robot cannot vote yet, but eventually Obama will probably say, let's give them citizenship (laughs) so so they can become voters. So I don't doubt that at all 50 or 20 years from now. Yeah, if they pull that lever that says Democrat, they'll give them the vote, that's for sure. Well, well, Tex, I want to... I want to thank you for coming on today. I know you're really busy down there in Texas. And um, you know, everybody out there, this book, um, I rarely do um, interviews like this, and this is one of the times where our, the book is important enough, and it's there's so much knowledge in here of what we're going to see into the future. And, you know, Tex, when you talk about what you were learning 20 years ago or so and then you saw nanotechnology that you've seen this firsthand this transformation and we're now at another cusp where everything in your book that you're talking about we're going to see in the next decade or two decades so uh, powerofprophecy.com for robot alchemy a, a fascinating book and thanks for coming on today Tex hey thank you Victor and all the best with your new network too there at American Free Press All right. Thanks a lot. Have a great afternoon, okay? Okay. God God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.